Hi guys, G.I. Joe here and welcome back to my bunker in Atlanta, Georgia. And today's video coming to you is a review on the new French set offered by HBG, Historical Board Gaming. I just purchased two of these actually, but what you see before you now is actually one set. The other set I have is still in this baggie. So this is a set here. Um, it is comprised, if I'm not mistaken, 88 pieces. I counted them all up. And the dollar amount is $39.95, and which I think is a, a good price. And uh, so what I'd like to do is I'd like to go over the different parts and pieces that we have here and maybe do some comparison to some out-of-box pieces as well as compare them to some... Um, other HBG pieces and then give you my opinion on you know this or that so let's start with the land units and we will start with the infantry so I have the infantry broken up into two groups now one reason I like the set is that like I said there are 88 pieces and I have two tables to play um, Axis and allies with so I have two sets and as we all know the French do not need tons of pieces because they lose most of them in on the G1 and uh, So actually I think personally that one set One set for $40 essentially is really enough to supply at least two tables or two different games so uh, which I'm excited about, which means I can take my one set here now and basically divide it in half and have one for table A and one for table B here in my bunker. And for some pieces, I can even divide it into four because as we know, France really doesn't get to spend that much money. So let's, let's, uh, let's start with a review here on the infantry. So there are 16 infantry that come with this and then there are four, I think these are partisans if I'm not mistaken, I'll have to look on the website, but I had them broken into eight and eight because these are my two different tables. So let's take a look at the infantry sculpt. Sculpt. So the infantry sculpt, looking at this, is has a very good bit of detail. Get this to zoom here a little bit. I do like the detail on this. I like the pose, as you can see. Of course, it comes in the out of box blue. One thing, of course, it has the HBG stamp on the bottom. Um, I do like this sculpt a lot. Of course, if we compare this to an out-of-box sculpt, of course, mine are painted, my weathered. Um, it's just different, and I, I like having different sculpts. So even though I do like the out-of-box sculpt, I think I like the sculpt that they selected for the French infantry. Now... One thing that is a little different that I notice fairly quickly is if you look at the, the base, here's one of my historical board gaming Marines. And you can see the H there. You can see that the base is a good bit bigger. Okay. And which may or may not be an issue. I'm not sure why it is bigger. Maybe there was a reason and perhaps it's the way that they did the pose, they needed a wider base for that pose. But I like this sculpt. The only thing that it is, it doesn't do, for those of us that might be a little bit OCD, is as you can see, the this is an HBG Marine, that fits right there in the middle of that chip. Whereas this base is a, it's a little bit bigger. So it doesn't really fit in that little center circle. Now, again, that may or may not be an issue for you. I'm not saying, um, I would kind of prefer it if it had a smaller base like this, but I can't really complain because, you know, my custom infantry here, like this is, these are some of my custom French infantry, you know, they don't really fit in the middle perfectly either because they don't have round bases. But um, anyway, so I do like the infantry sculpts. They definitely give you enough. They give you 16. And uh, so I think overall the infantry is a good sculpt. Perhaps um, my, my wish would 
perhaps be if it, if the base was a little bit smaller, but you know, that's not a buzzkill necessarily. Here's a French, I guess, partis partisan. I think that's what they're calling this. Um, the base, again, is the same size as, well, actually, it's a slight bit smaller than their infantry skull. So it's a little bit, actually, it's a little bit closer to their other HBG pieces. So, um, and also the, the plastic on the infantry sculpt is a little bit, as you can see, it's a little bit thinner. So it's not kind of sturdy. You can see that the leg is already broken. And, and I have not really done anything with these guys other than, now, of course, that just might be a bad piece because this is a lot more sturdy. So in fairness, that just might be a bad piece, which is not a big deal to me because I'm not going to use that. Yeah, this is a lot more sturdy. And yeah, that one as well. So that's just one little weird piece. Not a big deal. All right, so that's the infantry. Um, let's go to the armor. So the armor, at first glance, I like the sculpt a lot. And one thing I noticed is, check out this. The turret comes out, which I think is really, really cool. And I think once I get this painted up in my weathered, my weathered uh, paint scheme, you know, like this right here, this French blue color, and then put the polyurethane on it, I think this is gonna look really good. Um, as far as the detail on this, I think the detail is pretty good. You can see the typical tracks along the bottom of the tank, which I think is great. I love how HBG does that. It's kind of their trademark, I guess. Um, the side of it, I'm gonna compare this to another HBG tank. You can see that the side of the, this is a Japanese medium tank. And I love how it's got the, you know, the, uh, the wheels and all that. Now, the reason you don't see the wheels here, I think if you look on line, uh, this is actually supposed to be like a steel plate going up, you know, over the top of these wheels. So that's why you don't see the, uh, the different wheels there. But I think there's supposed to be one poking out at the bottom on the back here. I'm not really sure, but you can't really tell. And uh, of course on the other side. So I'm really not sure, like, I'm not sure what this is supposed to be. Is that a grill? Is this a solid piece of sheet metal or, you know, metal? So I'm not sure on that. The top overall, I think there's just in general a little bit more detail on this Japanese HBG tank than this one. And of course, just to show you comparison, here's a, an American tank. And you can just see the detail on the American tank is a little bit better. Now, admittedly, the detail on this tank is popping out more so because I have the polyurethane in there. So it kind of seeps into the little crevices and helps some of these details pop. So, um, I'll wait until I actually paint these up in my weathered scheme and put the polyurethane on it to see how much detail pops out of this. So I'll kind of wait to uh, make a determination on how I feel about this sculpt. But in general, I just like the way it looks. Um, my first gut reaction is I might like a little more detail and, and it's like they just didn't, you know, carve out the plastic as much or as deep as in here. So you see just a little bit of hint of detail, right? But not so much as that. But again, I'll wait until I actually paint this up and put polyurethane on it. That may cause some of that detail to pop out more. Of course, you can see, again, another HBG with a lot of great detail. So, I mean, it's evident that HBG does a fantastic job with, with so many of their pieces. So, uh, I love that the turret comes out. That's a cool detail piece. But, uh, you know, like I said, once I get this painted up, I'll maybe come back on and do a recap of this and see what I think. Now, let's go to the mech. If we go to the mech, you can see that this does have tracks. Now, one thing I did notice is that the tracks that you can see here, yes, these tracks on my Japanese tank are more detailed because of the polyurethane that's making them pop, but just feeling across the top, it's like the laser cut or however they, they do this, it just it didn't cut into the plastic that much. 
So I have a feeling that when I put my polyurethane on here, it's not gonna make the wheels pop out because I can just feel the grooves in the plastic for this. In fact, you can kind of even just see where you look at this, it's like you just barely skim the surface. So, but we'll see. Like I said, I'll, I'll paint this up, put polyurethane on it, and it might be great. Um, and the same concept on the top as with the tank. The detail doesn't seem quite as deep into the plastic. Um, overall, I like the, the look of the piece. I think it's going to be a good sculpt. Um, perhaps cutting into the plastic a little bit deeper would um, make this piece pop a little bit more. But we'll see what happens when I get my polyurethane on it. All right, let's look at the artillery. I really like this piece as well. Oh, let me get another. You get four, by the way, you get four tanks in the set and you get four um, mechs. And I mean, that's enough for, you know, I'm gonna have two boards. So here's the artillery piece. Nice sturdy plastic. So even though you've got a, a little barrel right here for this cannon, it's, you know, it's not flimsy at all, which is good. Uh, you can see the spokes of the wheels here. Again, they're not too deep into the plastic. But uh, I'd like the general look of that. Okay, something different. Of course, but the piece I'm using now is this Russian skull. Again, and this is a, of course. So uh, I'm not sure how I feel on this yet. I like the fact that it's a different looking thing. Uh, like I said, I'll have to say once, see once I uh, paint it up and put some polyurethane on it. So you get four of those. Talked about the mechs. Talk about the tanks. So I think that's the land unit. So now let's go to let's go to the air units, and then we'll spend the rest of the time on the sea unit. So the fighters. Um, here's a fighter, and here is the out of box fighter. And I think I like the HBG one a lot better, actually. You can see the little exhaust or whatever coming out right there. You can see the, the turret, cockpit rather, versus this. This is the out of box. Of course, I have this painted up and magnetized. But a uh, good solid plastic. And I think I like this sculpt a lot. I think this is this is going to be a good option for the French plane that will never get used. By the way, but so and you get you get eight of those. So I mean, look over here. To, um, I've got you know in groups of four. So for board A, board B, but technically you could even <laughs> split it up into four boards because I mean you're not going to use these planes as we know. You know, in, in, unless. I mean, how many times does G1 fail to where France actually survives? And, you know, if I've got two games going on at the same time, the odds that both G1s fail, slim to none. So, shouldn't be a problem. Uh, all right, so let's go back over here in the back. We see the mechs, not the mechs, I'm sorry, tactical bombers or tactical fighters. Kind of looks like a mosquito. Okay, and uh, here's the out-of-box as well. Um, not sure how I feel about this yet. I mean, I like the overall look, I think. I, I definitely like the detail on the bottom. Okay. Uh, of course, to magnetize it, I'm going to have to shave off a little bit of that plastic there to put a magnet on there. But I definitely like the side profile. Definitely like the top. Um, wingspan is a little thin compared to this, but there are they are different planes. So, uh, yeah, I think that's going to work. It kind of looks like a mosquito a little bit. You get four of these as well. Okay, enough of that. The bombers, of course, here's the bomber that comes in the outer box. And then here's the size of the bomber that comes in the new French set. Um, this one is not that, I like, not that detailed. Not that this one is either. But uh, I actually kind of feel that the fighter is a little more detailed 
because you can see kind of like the cockpit and the little lines showing the three different, I don't know if you can see that, three different glass panes and this is just solid plastic, but um, nice to have a different option for a bomber, you know, so everything doesn't look the same. You get four of those, by the way, in the set. All right, let's talk about the Navy. Um, of course, you get some submarines that are comparable to about, you know, the Japanese size or length of the Japanese submarines. And, uh, I mean, <laughs> probably never going to use these. The plastic is okay. So some, some of these pieces, you know, tend to warp up a little bit. So you might have to put them in warm water, bend them down. But these, these pieces actually aren't too bad. Um... Detail is okay, not much to it, but I think you know any out of box, sorry, any out of box uh, submarine really doesn't have much detail either. But I won't get into those because that I mean it's not a big deal. Again, four subs, two, four for each, or eight subs come in this package. But uh, you could easily divide those into groups, four groups of two for four boards because you're not going to use those as we all know. All right, let's go to the destroyer. So if you see the destroyer, here's the out-of-box destroyer. The out-of-box destroyer, and you see the new French destroyer. So the length is pretty much spot on, if you're concerned about the size. Uh, looking at the detail, here, it looks like they did a really good job of cutting in the plastic a lot deeper. So I think you're gonna see a lot better detail. And I like, you can see the bridge and all this kind of stuff as compared to the outer box. Um, it does look like the outer box has a little more detail, but once again, this might just be because of my polyurethane. So I'm actually excited about getting this painted and and have some and putting polyurethane on it. I think that's gonna seep down into these crevices and really make some of that detail really, really pop. So I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to that. So I do, I, I, I like the destroyer sculpt and uh, we'll see what happens when I paint that puppy up right the cruiser so you can see the cruiser length this is the out-of-box cruiser for France and the cruiser length is on par with that um, I want you to see the detail again here's the detail of the out-of-box cruiser and here's a detail of this this piece I don't know what to think of this yet again it looks like the it wasn't dug in to the plastic that deep. I definitely like the bridge area up here. I think that's very, very good detail. I'm just not sure, so sure how I feel about all this right here. I think the stuff in the back is fine. Um, you compare that to all the stuff. I know it's a different type of destroyer. But once again, at first glance, it just looks like the plastic was not really... I don't know, I just didn't kind of dive in and dig into the plastic quite enough to make that detail pop. But once again, we'll see what happens when I paint. So, so far of all the pieces, this might be my least favorite, the Cruiser. Um, right, so let's go to the Battleship. So the Battleship is way better than the out-of-box Battleship. I hate, I deplore the battleship that comes with the French and the Russian sets. It is despic, it's, I just hate it. Uh, let you know, this is the, the Anzac battleship. So you see it's a little bit uh, longer there, but okay. So I'll put that down easier, let's do this. You get four battleships in this set. So this is the, I don't speak French. Richelieu, I don't know. Help me out, Corpo. I don't speak French. But um, I'll let you compare that to another. This is another HBG sculpt. This is the Nagato, which is a really good sculpt. I like it a lot. It has a lot of great detail. Look at that detail. That's awesome. So I think this has a lot of really good detail around the bridge and all this kind of stuff. Definitely in the guns. And... I see some cross sections going across. I don't know if that's supposed to be like wooden planks or something, but again, at first glance, it looks like it doesn't, it just didn't really dig in enough, but I definitely think that thus far, this is probably the best naval sculpt 
that, uh, that they have. You can see the side profile. I think that's, I think that's gonna look nice once it's painted up, all right? And then we have their aircraft carrier, the Burn 1940. You see the side profile? You see the top, the cool thing is, you know, it's flat here. You know, probably drop some magnets right in there or uh, not that you'll ever use an aircraft carrier for France. Again, on the side profile view, uh, I like kind of what they attempted to do right here. I wish maybe they would have dug into the plastic just a little bit more. Kind of maybe make that detail pop some, but we'll paint it up and see if the polyurethane will, will make that, uh, will give it the effect that I want. Wait, why is that tail piece kind of bend down? Yeah, it looks like right here, this tail area bends down on both of those. I don't know, maybe, the air, maybe that aircraft carrier just did that, I'm not really sure. So as you can see, it's pretty consistent on all the pieces. It just doesn't really go in that deep, but you know. So those are the aircraft carriers and you get four aircraft carriers. So we all know that other than the cruisers and destroyers that, that they start the game with, you're really not gonna use your Navy. So uh, I could easily take, you know, there's four battleships, four destroyers, four cruisers, no, eight cruisers. So I could definitely split this into four different boards. You know, I could put a battleship, an aircraft carrier, two cruisers, two destroyers, and two subs could go on one board. And I could do that for three other boards as well. And that would be plenty Navy. For France. Okay, one last thing I forgot the transport. This piece I think I like a lot. Of course, we know the out of box transport is hideous. Same thing as the US one. But I like this. It kind of looks like my German ones I got from HBG, just a little bit. But I like these a lot better than the out of box. And uh, I think these are going to paint up and look really nice once I get them weathered as well figure out if that's upside down or not. Olo or Golo? Elo? I'm thinking that this was like the inverse. Like maybe it's Golo, but the G should be there. G-O-L-O. -O. I don't know. Or maybe I'm just an idiot. That's quite possible. So I like the transport. This is a little bit flimsy here, at least on that piece. Let's see. Yeah, it's a little more sturdy. So I think I've covered all the pieces here. You get one, two, three, four, five, you get eight transports. So again, you get 88 pieces. Um, one set is $39.95. Um, 88 pieces for that, I think that's a good deal. I think the price point is good. You can easily divide this up into two boards. And actually, if you wanted to, other than the infantry, you could probably divide this up into four boards. I think the infantry would be the only issue um, I can't remember how many infantry actually start on the, in the out box, but, uh, well, we can take a look at that here. But let me count this up. So out of box, French infantry. I'm gonna go by countries because you can always use chips. So France has one, Mer uh, Normandy, south of France, United Kingdom, Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, Syria, French. So you need eight infantry yeah, so you need eight or eight nations that or countries, territories that need infantry. So you pretty much have enough infantry in one set to have um, for two different boards. So anyways, hope you like the review, guys. Overall, I think this is a really neat set. I thank uh, HBG for providing this. Um, I'll be interesting to see what kind of detail happens when I put on my polyurethane, and I will definitely come back once I do that process and let you have a second look at this and see what you guys think. And uh, I'd like to see what you, maybe you think. Maybe chime in in the comments below and maybe let me know what you think about the pieces, what you think about the detail, how they compare and stock up, stack up rather, to uh, the out-of-box pieces or the other HBG pieces. And um, let me know what you think, guys, all right? Well, thanks for watching, and um, we will see you next time. Thanks, guys.